pouring a prosthetic core with TC1630. We're going to pour up a core using some 1630 resin. This is one of our newer products, new to us anyway. This is BJB's 1630 resin. This is a filled resin that's ideal for prosthetic molds, where especially molds where heat might be applied, like foam latex molds, or other tooling applications where heat or pressure needs to be applied to the mold. Now, one of the first things I like to do is label the lids A and B. And that's always a good thing to do on all products, but especially these cans like this, where uh, you have these steel cans with these lids that uh, you got to remember which one is which. If you get those lids swapped around, they will glue themselves back in place. So I always like to mark A and B on the lids before I do anything else. And that way that eliminates that chance for or accidentally switching those lids around later on. Now the 1630, this is a filled resin and that means it has a filler in both components that will need to be stirred up before it can be used. And that'll take a little bit of time. If you're uh, using this product for the first time, sometimes it's a good idea to flip the, uh, the buckets upside down for a little bit and then right side up again right before you mix it up so that gravity can do some of that uh, mixing for you. But both sides will need to be stirred before use and it'll take a little bit to stir that up and get that filler into suspension so be sure to take time to do that and after you've done it that initial time after you've opened the uh, resin kit it'll be a lot easier uh, each time after that so make sure that you properly suspend the filler in both components before you start weighing out your resin uh, if you don't do that that will put you off ratio and you won't have resin that cures properly so make sure that you stir up both sides really good get that filler into suspension and before you measure out your parts A and B. Now for this particular uh, pour that we're going to do, we're going to need about 1800 grams. So we're measuring out 900 grams of A and 900 grams of B. And you'll notice here it's a good idea to take a paper towel and wipe off the lip of the uh, can and that way we make sure that that part A doesn't congeal and glue that lid into place. And this is a urethane resin system, so make sure that you uh, take appropriate precautions against moisture contamination. Uh, we're working in a climate-controlled shop with almost no humidity, so we can get away with using wooden stir sticks. But if you're in an area with really high humidity, it's always a good idea to switch to a steel spatula to stir. You want to minimize the chance to introduce any kind of humidity into the product as you're mixing and measuring. And it's also a good idea to seal up your containers as soon as you're done dispensing the resin. Because again, uh, the longer those cans sit open, the more they're exposed to potentially humid air. And especially if you're in a humid environment like uh, Louisiana or down in Houston, uh, that's where you get a lot of moisture contamination is when uh, lids are left off the containers. Now 1630 has a four to five minute working time at room temperature and then about a one hour demold. So I like to take a good 45 seconds to a minute to mix and make sure I take time to scrape the sides and the bottom of the container several times so we incorporate all of the filler and all of the resin into the mixture. And you'll notice I'm also scraping off the stir stick and then incorporating that back into the mixture. And that's real important that we get a proper mix, especially when we have a material that has a filler suspended in it. If we don't take time to mix that properly, your resin will not set properly or it may set up and be oily. Now, we're going to be pouring this into a Tinsil 8030 silicone mold. So we don't need any mold release. We're just going to pour straight into it, just from the lowest point, and let it fill up. And even though we have that filler, it still pours very easily and captures lots of detail. So remember, if you've got any fingerprints or anything like that on your part, all of that will be reflected in that final pattern. And since we didn't know exactly how much that core mold would take, we mixed a little bit extra. And I always like to have some molds on standby, just some small bitty logo molds or anything else like that to pour my resin into. And that way uh, we don't have any of that resin go to waste. Now this is about an hour later and our resin has cured. And one of the nice things about pouring up a smaller part is when that is cured to where we can demold a small part, we know that the larger part is ready to demold. Because uh, a typical of uh, urethane resins, uh, bigger parts with greater mass are going to cure faster than smaller parts with a thinner cross section. So if that small part is set up to where we can demold it, then we know our larger part is ready to demold. 
And now we have our cast core piece ready for uh, floating a sculpt off a life cast and onto that core for the rest of our mold making process. And you notice Patrick has sculpted some keys in there and they're now incorporated into that resin core. And just take a, a little bit of time to clean it up with a rasp and our mold is ready to go. And this kind of resin mold is ideal for mold making applications where uh, pressure or heat is applied to the mold. This is a really hard resin so it's ideal for uh, silicone prosthetic molds that have to be clamped or subjected to mild heat. And of course you can find the TC1630 resin on our web store in the resin section at brickintheyard.com. You can check the links in the video description. We'll have all the products that we used in this video listed in the video description so you can find the links there. And if uh, this is the sort of thing you're curious about and you want to check out some of the other crazy things that happen around our workshop, you can follow us on Instagram at instagram.com slash bittymoldsupply.